SEC kickoff with Vince Dooley is presented by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Achievement is always in control. Find out how you can get control of your finances at pncvirtualwallet.com. Hello again, college football fans. Welcome back to SEC Kickoff. I'm your host, Vince Dooley. As we enter the home stretch of the college football season, the race to the SEC championship game in Atlanta is taking shape. Today, we'll take a quick look back at last Saturday and then preview another huge upcoming weekend around the SEC. Let's get started. Georgia versus Florida at Jacksonville. This ancient rivalry that has been dominated by Florida for some two decades is now more balanced as the Dogs beat the Gators 17 to nine, making it two in a row and evening the series in the last six years at three wins apiece. It was a wild defensive struggle with 24 penalties and 10 turnovers between the two teams. After the Gators dominated South Carolina 41 to 11 the previous week, the odds were heavily in favor of the Gators. But Georgia's defense, led by All-American Jarvis Jones, was relentless in forcing six Florida turnovers. The Gators previously had turned the ball over only four times in the first seven games. Two of those turnovers were devastating to the Gators. Georgia's safety, Ricardo Rambo, intercepted a pass from Gator quarterback Jeff Driscoll in the end zone right before halftime, and Jarvis Jones, who may well have had the best overall defensive performance in Georgia's history, with 13 tackles, three sacks, two fumble recoveries, and two forced fumbles, the most critical one coming at the end of the game as he stripped Jordan Reed inside the five-yard line just as Florida looked to be going in for a touchdown to tie the game. Driscoll, got it. Jordan Reed fumbles it into the end zone. Wow, touchback. Mississippi State at Alabama. Alabama manhandled undefeated Mississippi State 38-7 thus knocking off one tough SEC West challenger as they prepare for an even tougher one in Baton Rouge Saturday night. A.J. McCarron continues his precise management of Alabama's offense, completing 16 of 23 passes for 208 yards and two touchdowns as the Tide reached the end zone in its first three possessions. Mississippi State, that came into the game leading the nation in turnover ratio, lost two fumbles and an interception to Alabama's stout defense. The Bulldogs did not score a point until the final minute. Time after time, Alabama stopped them in the red zone. Alabama's passing attack was balanced by another strong running game, this time led by freshman backup T.J. Yeldon, who rushed for 84 yards in an 11-yard touchdown run. An important characteristic in all great defenses is perseverance. The really tough defenses, and Georgia was that this past Saturday, makes offenses earn every yard. Last week, the Georgia defense showed great determination and resiliency against Florida. Let's look at two specific plays that greatly impacted the outcome of that football game. Right before halftime, Florida drove to Georgia's five-yard line, and Jeff Driscoll, who was pursued, came out of the pocket, ran to the sidelines, had an opportunity to really throw the ball away, but made one of the big mistakes of quarterbacks, and that is to throw back across your body. And quarterbacks periodically get away with it, but in most cases, they get in trouble. And in this case, Ricardo Rambo, for Georgia intercepted the ball and finished the drive and took tremendous momentum away from Florida in that play. The second critical play in the ball game came 
before the end of the game, again inside the five-yard line, as Florida completed a pass to Jordan Reed, who ran inside the five, looked like he was going to try to jump for the goal line, and once again, Jarvis Jones, hustling back from the line of scrimmage, stripped the ball from Reed. It, the ball went in the end zone, and Georgia recovered. And that's two of the biggest plays in the whole football game, all inside the five-yard line. Now it's time for our weekly SEC flashback. This week, we look back to 2008, and the first time Nick Saban returned to Baton Rouge as the head coach at Alabama. As with this year, Coach Saban and the Tide were ranked number one and looking to pull off a tough road victory. This was a back and forth game and the teams needed overtime to settle the outcome. Short drop to throw, and he does. Down the far sideline to the spot. And goes Johnson in motion. And the handoff to Scott. Scott up the middle, big hole. 25, 30, Tigers have over six on third down conversions. It's third down and eight. Shotgun formation, four receiver pattern. Lee looks to throw, and he does, and he threw it right into the hands of an Alabama defender. And back he goes down the near sidelines. He may take it into the end zone, and he does. That is unbelievable. It stayed out of his depth. The receiver's right. Here's the toss to Coffey near side, and he's easily into the end zone. Lee, number seven. Hands it this time to Scott, and Scott is into the score. So here we go, LSU will get it at the 25, we're in overtime. Two receivers, right eye formation, Scott and Johnson, Lee under center. And he hands the ball away, Scott straight up the middle, plows down to about the 20 yard line. Little snap, Lee rolls to the far side, Cox and fires, and he fires with a double coverage, he's intercepted in the end zone, more touchdown. As Lee has been intercepted for the fourth time tonight. Play action bank. Wilson throws to the near sidelines. And it is caught and out of bounds at the three yard line. Quarterback sneak at the goal line. Alabama wins the game. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Saturday's game is just as exciting as the matchup in 2008. The game could very well determine the Western Division champion and will shape the national championship picture. Needless to say, LSU and Alabama will be a pressure-packed contest. And now a word from our sponsor. Virtual Wallet can help you be that person who's good with money. See what's free to spend, move money with a slide, save with a shake. Feel good about your decisions. For this week's Head Coach One-on-One, -on -one, we bring in a very special guest, my friend Jack Lingle, a former coach and highly respected athletic director. Jack may not have coached in the SEC, but he has plenty of experience dealing with pressure situations. Fans may recognize Coach Lingle from his days as the head coach at Marshall. Actor Matthew McConaughey played Coach Lingle in the 2006 film, We Are Marshall. I think it's important when you're dealing in a big game is to keep the climate, the environment, and the stress level in a business-like formation in terms of working with your players. You don't want to get them too high. You don't want to get them too low. You want to keep them so that they're concentrating on the fundamentals of the game and what are the goals and objectives of your offense, your defense, and your kicking game. Focus that. Get them to drill down vertically on that and know their particular assignments. 
And the most important thing, I think, in, in a game like this, football today is a game of attrition. So make sure that your second and your third teams are all playing the same game and listening to the same instructions and ready to go at a moment's notice to replace their first stringer or their second stringer. That's the key to the game when you have depth, and you need depth to win big games. Now that we've heard from Coach Lingle, let's talk about the huge game in Baton Rouge. Alabama and LSU will kick off at 8 Eastern time, and CBS will have the primetime coverage. Alabama and LSU. Saturday night in Baton Rouge has long been one of the greatest spectacles in college football. The place will be rocking as LSU, with a week off, will be ready to give number one Alabama its strongest test. The Tigers beat them last year in Tuscaloosa in the regular season before losing in the national championship game to the Tide. LSU can certainly match Alabama for sheer manpower on defense, both in talent and in depth. But the apparent difference appears to be on the other side of the ball. Alabama's A.J. McCarron leads the nation in pass efficiency and has thrown 262 passes without an interception, which is a school record. But LSU is capable of ending that streak. However, Alabama's no mistake offense with terrific balance between the pass and the run is definitely better than LSU's offense that has been inconsistent and prone to mistakes with their young quarterback, Zach Mettenberger. Alabama should prevail in a hard-knocking contest that probably will come down to the wire. Another game to keep an eye on this weekend is Ole Miss at Georgia. This is an important game for the Bulldogs coming off their big win against Florida. Ole Miss at Georgia. Georgia is back in control of the SEC East as it takes on Ole Miss in homecoming between the famous Hedges and Athens. Georgia, coming off their emotional huge upset win over rival Florida, will be fighting a natural letdown just as much as they will be fighting the Rebels. But the Bulldogs' offense that did not fare well against the aggressive Gator defense, who stopped the Dogs 12 of 13 times on third down conversion, should be ready to make amends and put on a homecoming show. Quarterback Aaron Murray, who holds the Georgia record for touchdown passes, should add to that record. And freshman running back Todd Gurley, who had 119 yards and a touchdown in the Florida game, is primed for another great game running the football. The Bulldogs should win and take another step forward in pursuit of the SEC East Championship. However, this well-coached Ole Miss team will make the Dogs earn the victory. Well, another episode of SEC Kickoff is in the books. When we get together next week, we'll have a much better idea on the race to the SEC Championship game in Atlanta. Have a great football Saturday. I'm Vince Dooley, and I'll see you next time on SEC Kickoff. SEC Kickoff with Vince Dooley is presented by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Achievement is always in control. Find out how you can get control of your finances at pncvirtualwallet.com.